Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Lori Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, a chew. Tis the season for allergies and asthma. We've got advice to help you breathe easier. Then, deciding to downsize? We'll make room for questions to consider before making the move. We'll toast the sweet tastes of summer with drinks that are delicious and nutritious. Plus, best-selling author Regina Brett tells us why God is always hiring. And Medicaid wants your house. We'll tell you how to lock the door. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. Tis the season for annual allergies. Dr. David Stepnick is here to help us survive the summer with less sneezing. Dr. Stepnick is an ear, nose, and throat specialist with Metro Health. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, are there really annual allergies and then also perennial allergies, kind of like plants? Uh, yes, there are. Uh, perennial allergies are things like dust and animal danders that we can be exposed to year round, whereas annual or seasonal allergies are things that occur from the spring through the summer and into the fall. Um, this is when there are various allergens that are out there that people are allergic to, and it's important to recognize that that can be different from city to city, city mm -hmm. and different parts of the country. Oh, okay, so there's no actually winter allergens out there? Uh, winter allergens would be, not, not that grow, but there are molds and, and animal danders that are winter allergens. But the people who have the grass allergens and stuff are probably happy to see winter come, huh? <laughs> they're, very, they're very happy, actually. The first hard frost of uh, fall is often something they look forward to. Okay, so what kind of allergens are out there right now? Uh, Midsummer is basically something where we see a lot of uh, grass allergens, so the pollens of the grasses. Um, you may remember that about a month or so ago, you'd go outside and you could take your finger and you could wipe along your car and you could see the green. Those were the tree allergens. The tree pollens were particularly heavy this year. Um, and in fact, I had a number of uh, people that would tell me that they're not allergic, but they would come in with typical allergy um, uh, symptoms that occurred from the tree pollens. And then later in the summer, we see things like ragweed and different weeds that come out and mature. Okay, but in, our, in Northeast Ohio, we get so little warm weather. It's here for such a short period of time. We don't want to be stuck indoors. So there's something we can do to make the allergens not quite so allergic, I guess? Uh, there is. Obviously, one of the most important things is avoiding the uh, pollens and whatnot. So that would be remaining indoors and particularly with an air conditioner on but we don't necessarily want to do that. So when we are outside, uh, one of the things to do is to try to limit the time you might be outside or when you come in um, to wash your clothes. Um, if you've had heavy exposure, maybe uh, washing, taking a shower. Um, and sometimes uh, saline or salt water sinus rinses can actually help because the longer that the little particles stay inside the nose, the more of a response that we'll see. So that can be helpful as well. Okay, are there any medications that are useful? Uh, there are. There are several over-the-counter medications. Um, fairly recently, the nasal steroids, which, which used to be prescription only, were released as over-the-counter. Um, those can be used. It's important to recognize that those don't work right away. They take a while to build up and you have to use them regularly. Uh, people should be very cautious not to use decongestants like Afrin, which can be addictive. Um, one of the ones that's commonly uh, taken is um, an antihistamine. Um, those are pills. Um, those act very quickly. Um, but they have a short duration of action, basically a day or so. Um, and then for people that are particularly severe allergy sufferers, there are things that you can get from your physician, including things like allergy shots. And allergy shots do require a commitment, though. You have to go back uh, week after week after week, and it may be quite some time. And at Metro Health, we actually offer something like allergy slot shots where you get um, it uh, by something that's put underneath the tongue. And I think at this point, we're the only um, provider in Cleveland that does that. A little nicer than a shot, huh? It's nicer than a shot. <laughs> well, great information for us today. Are you sitting inside this summer because of your annual allergies? You can enjoy the great outdoors. Just follow Dr. Stepnick's advice to keep your allergy reactions within reason. My thanks to Dr. Stepnick for joining us today. Thank you. To learn more, call Metro Health at 216-778-7800 or log on to www.metrohealth.org. Next, to move or not to move, that is the question. 
but first, way back in 1508, this visionary painted a picture of contact lenses as a solution to the subject of poor sight. But sadly, his suggestion was brushed off. Can you name this Renaissance man who was an inventor and architect as well as an artist? We'll draw out the answer when we return. Hilltop Village Apartments is retirement living at its best. Residents enjoy a wide variety of activities and living services with all large first floor apartments, private screened in patios with beautiful park views, daily dining room meals, free laundry facilities, 24 hour staff and so much more. Enjoy safe, comfortable independence at a very affordable price. Call today for a tour and learn how you can get your first month's rent free. Hilltop Village Apartments, retirement living at its best. Leonardo da Vinci's many aptitudes included an interest in anatomy. His focus on eyesight resulted in the concept of contact lenses. His short-sighted peers couldn't see how to craft these lenses. His plans weren't put into practice for another 300 years. Are you up for downsizing? And will a smaller home mean a bigger balance in your bank account? Mark Niederhelman is here to weigh the true cost of scaling back. Mark is a financial advisor with the Lineweaver Financial Group. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Lori. Well, you know, your kids are grown, they're gone, so why shouldn't we want to, you know, kind of downsize to something a little bit smaller? Lori, it's the same question so many people here in Northeast Ohio are asking themselves. And when you look at the Bureau of Labor, Labor Statistics recent survey, Americans spend twice as much money on their housing as almost any other expense, and most Americans spend about a third of their income on housing, so a smaller cent, a smaller home makes sense to a lot of people. So why can't some folks commit to that? I would say the biggest obstacle for a lot of people is it's emotional. Most of us have a very large attach, uh, emotional attachment to our homes, and it's hard to break that attachment. With any change, there's anxiety, and here we're talking about a very big change. Secondly, moving is no fun at all, and anybody who's ever moved <laughs> mm -hmm. knows that for sure. And if you've been in your home for any length of time, you've accumulated a lot of possessions, and the prospect of moving and getting into a smaller place can be very daunting. daunting. And this move is gonna be more difficult because you might ha not have space for everything that you've accumulated. So you're gonna have to get rid of things that you've accumulated over a number of years, and a lot of times that has an emotional com component uh, attached to it also. Sure, right. There's also the loss of concern of a family magnet. <laughs> Selling the large home might mean that you might not be the host of all the family events and your kids and grandkids might not be able to look at your home as a second home anymore. Logically, it really doesn't make sense to maintain a home 365 <laughs> days a year just to use it for a couple of family events. Right, so there right. really is an upside to not having that family magnet anymore. You might want to use other venues for those family gatherings, and oftentimes that's less stressful for everybody. Okay, so those are reasons not to move, but let's focus on reasons why it's a good thing. And there are many reasons. I think the, the first reason is income. If you have a mortgage, downsizing can help you reduce or possibly eliminate the monthly burden of that mortgage. And if you move to a smaller home, a lot of times all of your household expenses, your insurance, your utilities, your taxes could drop accordingly. Um, you have to make sure that you're not increasing any expenses like homeowners association fees if you move into a condo. Oftentimes the money that you save can translate into things that you've wanted to do but just haven't had the resources to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes selling a home can open up additional um, assets to invest. If you move into a smaller home you might have extra cash that you can use to invest to create additional income to cover your living expenses, or if you don't need the additional income right now, use those assets for future use. And a smaller place, it's less work, right? I'm yeah, all for that. Absolutely, <laughs> and oftentimes less work means more leisure time. Think of the regular chores that you do around your house, landscaping, um, household cleaning comes to, comes to mind. And if you're in an older home, think of all the repairs. And repairs are expensive both in time and in money. Any way you slice it, a smaller home typically requires less time. 
that translates into more leisure time. So downsizing might actually allow you to open up a new fun chapter in your life. Plus, if you have less space, you're gonna have to have less stuff. And if you have less space, you're gonna have fewer places to put things. So you're gonna have to very carefully consider every purchase that you make. Do I have space for all of this? So a lot of times people that downsize find that it reduces those unnecessary purchases that they make. All right, this has been great information here today to help people downsize. So if your house is too big and a condo seems too small, follow Mark's suggestions to find a home that's just right. And for help, give him a call, the number's next. I had to cut that off. For more information, call the Lineweaver Financial Group at 1-888-313-4009 or click to www.lineweaver.net. Next, sweet summer smoothies. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. The Cleveland Botanical Garden wants you to branch out this summer by visiting their tree houses. Five locally designed interactive homes at new heights invite you to get back to nature and linger among the leaves. To learn more about this Arbor Adventure, call 216-721-1600 or log on to www.cbgarden.org. Welcome to the lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. Having a hard time with the increasing heat? Well, we're serving up delicious ways to cool down. Cindy Baylog and Adam Wilson are here with nutritious drinks that are easy to swallow. Cindy is the manager of health promotion and wellness for Medical Mutual of Ohio, and Adam Wilson is the senior culinary manager at Vitamix. So welcome both of you to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us how smoothies fit in with Medical Mutual's um, goal for good health. Sure. Um, well, at Medical Mutual, we really want to encourage our members to lead active and healthy lifestyles. So that means uh, eating healthy, getting extra physical activity, um, and doing things like quitting smoking. Um, and it's really great when we can partner with clients like Vitamix so we can share this information. Okay, so what are all smoothies really created equal when we're talking about something like this? Especially out in the restaurants. Yeah, unfortunately, no, they're not. Um, so when you're when you're out at a restaurant and you're about to order a smoothie, you want to take a look at the ingredients. Um, so if a smoothie is including things like ice cream or whole milk, those are not good options. What you want to look for is skim milk or non-fat yogurt. Um, you also want to make sure that they're not incorporating excess amounts of sugar or syrups. Um, when you break down a smoothie, you want to include things like vegetables. Those are really easy to kind of add some good nutrition. To to your smoothie, um, but the bottom line is you want to make sure that there's fresh or frozen vegetables, um, fresh or frozen fruits, and also good sources of quality protein. All right, so Adam, I guess we're now going to start your Vitamix engine. Yes. What are we going to be making here today? We have our triple berry smoothie. So during the southern months, um, we have all these fresh fruits and vegetables, and so it's an easy way to get your health during the summer. Um, so it's the fresh during the summer, and maybe during the winter you use the frozen products because you still didn't get those nutrients out of those products. So mm -hmm. um, today we have that triple berry smoothie. So we have our water. We have green, red grapes. We have our low-fat yogurt. Oh, low-fat, always good, so yes. So low-fat. Um, we have our berries now, blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries coming into play. There's our triple play. Triple play. <laughs> and then we always want to secure our lid, turn it on, slowly increase to 10, and then to high. We're going to blend for about a minute. We always like to recommend going back the same way you started. So the next time you use it, the next morning, you don't flip it on and then it's on high and then you splatter yourself with all your great delicious smoothie. <laughs> yeah, splatter would be bad. You want to get it in your belly, not in your yes. on your clothes, right? So here's a little taste of mm -hmm. our triple berry smoothie, which is delicious for you. Packs a punch, and then salt can use as an afternoon snack or something like that, just Very to keep good. your energy level going throughout the day. All right, 
other healthy options like adding vegetables and other things like that, right? Yeah. yeah, so you could add spinach to this really easily and you won't even taste it. So all those fresh berries, they have great flavor and that's the biggest key about making a smoothie is you can pack all those nutrients in there and it still tastes good without adding sugars, without adding any extra um, sweeteners and you're still getting that sweet taste to it. It was excellent. excellent. Good for a summer day. As Cindy and Adam have shown, there are unending easy ways to drink to your health. And the taste, really smooth. My thanks to Cindy and Adam for joining us today. Thank you. Find out more about Medical Mutual of Ohio by visiting their website, www.medmutual.com slash 2015 options. Or call 1-866-488. 66. Next, it's never too late to find your calling. It's time to get up and go, an exercise minute on golden opportunities. Hello everybody, it's Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness and we're here today to show you how to do a oblique twist, which is going to help us with our obliques, more importantly that love handle area. You ready to go? I gotta get rid of these little All right, we can do it. Here we go. We're gonna start seated. We want our legs bent at about a 45 degree angle and your feet flat on the floor as much as they can be. Make sure we maintain good posture. We're simply gonna overlap our hands here and we're gonna try to touch the ground to the left and then we're gonna bring them across and try to touch the ground to the right, okay? We're looking for 12 to 15 repetitions on this one. And remember, the movement's actually gonna be in the core, in the trunk, not in the shoulders. How you feeling? Oh, I can feel those love handles good, leaving good. now. All right, real quick, you can add a little bit of resistance on this one to make it a little more challenging. Just go ahead, grab your weights at home and perform the exact same exercise with the exact same movement. All right, 12 to 15, two to three sets, and now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 6105 Parkland Boulevard, Suite 140, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 44124. In your first act, you grew up. In your second act, you probably got a job, got married, and had kids. But now that you're in your, now you're in your third act. Maybe you're retired, and you're done making a living. But have you done what you were really born to do? If not, your third act is the time to step into the spotlight because, as author Regina Brett reminds us in her latest best-selling book, God is always hiring. Regina is here to share a few of the 50 lessons for finding fulfilling work. So welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me on. So many of our viewers are retired or planning for retirement. Um, and they may think it doesn't matter that God is always hiring. So they're done working, but it's not all about employment though, is it? Well, they're done making a living, but now it's time to make a life because a lot of people put their life on hold to do the thing they had to do to pay the rent, to pay the mortgage, to get their kids through college. And many people did things they didn't really love, but it was what they had to do. And now's the time you can pause and say, okay, let me get quiet and listen to myself and say, what is the thing I was born to do? What is that deep passion that's always been there and I know it's there? Mm -hmm. And it's time to bring it up and All put right. the light on it. Well, you wrote this book, and obviously you were born to be a writer, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was my dream. But, you know, for many years I buried it. One of my lessons is burying your talents won't make them grow. And a lot of us have a talent. It could be singing in the church choir. It could be playing piano. It could be painting. But we bury it because we're so afraid. What if we're no good at it? The great thing about it in the third act is you don't have to be good at it. Just complete it. I tell people, don't let perfection stop you from completion. Mm. Just give it a shot. Try to complete a piece of art, complete a piece of music. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how, how bad it might look or feel, but the act of doing it is going to give you joy. Oh, all right. So good. Um, well, it, it took you a while to accept you wanted to be a writer, oh, correct? It you took know, a zigzag route to everything else. It was in there, but you didn't, in there. <laughs> you didn't know it for a while. So tell us about your path. Oh, my goodness. Well, when I went to college, I went to Kent State, and I studied science, and I flunked chemistry and <laughs> zoology. I did terrible. So I realized this is not it. I dropped out of school at 21, got pregnant. My whole life changed. But all those twists and turns really shape you into who you really want to be. So a lot of jobs I had to pay the rent, legal secretary. I worked at a funeral home picking out bodies. They gave me a PhD in life so that all those skills and experiences I could then use as a writer. And typing legal briefs taught me how to type, how to understand the court system. And as a journalist, it was a great benefit. 
Hmm, okay. So if we haven't been doing what we were born to do, is everything we've done up to this point, it's not a waste, as you're no. saying, right? You know, when you don't get what you want, you get something better experience. So all those things, I tell people, kind of collect it, do a little inventory, collect all the experience that have brought you joy, all the talents you've used, all the things you've learned, and say, okay, now, what do I want to do with them that just, I tell people, your joy meter, your passion meter. You don't have to go, huh, do I want to? It goes, wow. Whatever mm -hmm. goes, wow, that's your third act, is the wow. Excellent. Any last words of wisdom to help people kind of find what their, what their niche is? Well, one of my favorite cards, uh, somebody sent me, it said on the front, Orville Wright didn't have a pilot's license. And you <laughs> open it up and it says, go change the world. And I think sometimes we wait for people to tell us we can do something. We just need to tell ourselves we can and go do it. Go do it. That's a good final message. So if you want to make your third act the best one yet, but you still don't quite feel ready to take center stage, Regina has many lessons that will help you in her book, God is always hiring. For more information and inspiration, visit our website. It's coming up next. My thanks to Regina for joining us today. Thanks, Lori. Learn more or order the book by visiting Regina Brett's website, www.reginabrett.com. Next, how to gear up for downsizing. Here, we're improving the health of our community. Here, a student sees a doctor without ever leaving school. Here, a stroke survivor regains the use of his right hand. Here, a foster child gets the consistent care he deserves. Here, here, and here, we're breaking new ground every day. So we can break ground here tomorrow. Be a part of the Metro Health transformation. It's good for everyone, here. Did you miss a phone number or website? Then here's your second chance because we're going to list all of that information again. Then we'll be back to tell you how to keep Medicaid from feeling right at home in your house. a series of four legal segments on Medicaid planning. We previously discussed gifting assets to protect them from spending on the nursing home and then protecting those gifted assets for your future needs. If done right, you can still protect assets and qualify for Medicaid to pay the high cost of the nursing home. If you missed any of the segments on gifting or our other Medicaid segments, you can view those again on our Golden Opportunities YouTube channel. Some assets, however, are special and require special rules. One such asset is your home. In this third installment, we will discuss protecting your home with my, my, my law partner, Mike Solomon. Hi, Lori. All right, so why is the home such a special asset? Well, number one, for many people, the home is the most valuable asset they have. And, and you know, that they want to make sure they can pass something along to their children. That's always an important issue. And the other thing you talked about earlier on the show is for many people, the home, you know, they live there 30, 40, 50 years, that has an emotional attachment and it's not something you just give away that easily. Sure, and Medicaid doesn't let you just keep your house because of all those reasons? No, no, they, they don't have emotion in this. It's a financial <laughs> asset, and they want to make sure that they can cover the Medicaid costs that they may be paying. Um, so what's the first way Medicaid tries to get at your home? Well, you know, the, um, the home for a married couple, the house is a protected asset. And that means that uh, when, when one spouse maybe applies for Medicaid, they don't include the home in the calculation. You don't have to spend it down. So it's a, it's a very important asset, but you have to handle it correctly. And, and what's happened is many people do a lot of uh, estate planning for the, with their home involved, and they do what is normal for estate planning, but that turns out to sabotage their Medicaid planning. And, and let me give you the example. Okay. They'll take their house and let's say put it in a living trust, a revocable trust. That's standard estate planning to avoid probate and all the paperwork involved when someone passes sure. away. And that works for, for estate planning and, and real estate planning, but it's horrible for Medicaid planning because once the house is in the trust, 
If a spouse goes into a, a long-term care facility, it's not a protected asset. They have to spend their house. They have to get rid of their house. Oh my gosh, so that sounds horrible. What are people supposed to do? Well, you know, they have to do some advanced planning. One of the things is, whatever you do, number one, you, you might want to take the house out of the trust. Uh, even before that, though, I should mention, there's some legislation running through the, uh, Ohio, uh, the Ohio House and Senate, presumably, and so contact your legislator. I think there's going to be a website up on the screen. There is. Contact them. Tell them that change this law, because they're looking to change it so that by having the house in a trust doesn't cause a problem. Mm -hmm. But until that happens, take the house out of the trust. Put it possibly in your joint names, husband and wife. And then, and that way you can protect the asset if one of the, one of the uh, spouses goes into a long-term care facility. Okay. But then you could have some problems still after that. Oh, no. Yeah, so. More issues, another way that they try to get your house? Well, let's say, I'm going to use the husband. Let's say the husband goes into a long-term care facility and the house is either in his name alone or jointly. If he passes away, the Medicaid is going to come after the house for the half he owns, if it's in joint ownership, or if it's, in all, if it's his name solely, they're going to come after the whole house. So it's important you sit down with someone who knows this area of the law. You know, there are, as we've mentioned before, there are attorneys who are certified in elder law planning. So sit down with an attorney who knows this area of the law and make sure you do the right planning, proactive planning. Don't wait till it's too late. Yeah, it sounds like they get you coming and going, and right. planning is so, so critical. It seems that Medicaid loves your house as much as you do, but not in a good way. They want its financial value. If you don't carefully plan how to title your home, you could lose not only the financial value, but the emotional value as well. Don't let that happen. For help and information, give Mike a call. Call Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization. Or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us. On next week's show, we'll help you boost your brain power with exercises for the mind. Then, ready for a makeover, we'll share before and after pictures that will prove it's possible. We'll discover tips from old school entrepreneurs who teach us about reinventing ourselves. And is mom or dad already in a nursing home? It's still not too late to protect your assets. We'll explain. But until then, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. Would you like to join our kitchen conversation? All you have to do is call toll free 1-877-765-1543 and leave us your question, name and phone number or log on to www.golden.tv for all the latest information and show updates. Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions.